Hello, John. How are you? I'm good, boys. Kind of uh, happy hockey. At least this part of hockey's over. I'm yeah. always tired. Yeah, it was a long season. A long man. year, John. An <laughs> oh, awfully boy. long year. And, and so why don't we just start there? Because... I felt like last week we might have gotten to a breaking point in terms of people complaining about the duration of the NHL season. It's always been a CBA matter, we've been told, right? Because the standard player contract expires July 1st. we got a CBA coming up in a couple of years. Do we think that this year was the learning that we got to move the hockey season up and get it finished a little a little more quickly? Are you June? kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you serious? Yes. No. No. Oh. Um, first of all, the, the the July 1st is because it's the National Hockey League fiscal year. They go July 1st to June 30th. So it's strictly a financial thing in addition to the collective bargaining agreement. Um, but when we see the ratings uh, later today, and we'll see numbers that suggest that between the two countries, and this is this is my guess, we're going to be close to 12 million people. Everybody's going to say, hey, they're watching hockey on June 24th. What's the problem? Well, let's keep on going. I guess the question would be, could you have got a bigger audience if the game had been a little earlier in the and, month? And what did game three and game four look like on the relative scale? You know, uh, uh, well, in, 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 in the ratings for the whole final were up in the United States and the rating uh, in Canada was always over three million. Game six did 4.7 million in the in Canada and 4.2 in the United States. So we're we're in that nine million. I just think that game seven's numbers are going to be yeah. stronger um, because everybody everybody always tunes in for a definitive game. So I I think people are going to think we're just fine. And by oh. the way, if the Canucks, if the if it had been the Canucks in the in the Stanley Cup final rather than the Oilers. Everybody in Vancouver would have said it was just well, fine. Sure, anybody in the two competing markets is in. I mean, in for a penny, in for a pound. Uh, but uh, no, uh, I was talking. Well, this was a compelling series in the end that lots of people latched on to in games five, six, and seven. Mm -hmm. But the players have to say, back to the CBA part of it, like, you know, sports are starting to realize they're asking too much of their athletes. Uh, you know, at what point do the players say, we've got no interest in playing for you for 10 of the 12 months of the year? Uh, at what point do they step up and have their voice heard there? You know, the players are business partners. The mm -hmm. players love the money. <laughs> the players uh, are just fun with it. In fact, I would tell you that probably the players like the schedule of the Stanley Cup final with the extra day of rest between travel days. So in many ways, I would say that the, the, the players were catered to in this scenario of this final, and that might become more of a precedent than anything else. But there's a happy medium there of starting the season October. Sure there, sure there is. Starting but that's, here, let me just tell you one, one story. Uh, so I was with the league for five years, and I sat in a board of governors meeting, Three owners in the meeting that suggested the hockey season should start November 1st. All three of them were from southern U.S. cities. Mm -hmm. All three of them had very important NFL teams in their cities. And none of them wanted to play hockey and compete against the National Football League. So, And that was at a time when our, our American TV partner was all in with hockey first because it was the primary uh, property that they had on their cable network, NBC. Well, the National Hockey League now partners with TNT and with ESPN Disney, whose primary partners are basketball and football. And hockey is at least third in one network and second in the other. Uh, and... I, I would suggest that pushing the schedule to the middle of October, that competes less with football, competes less with Major League Baseball playoffs, is the way it's going to be in the, in the foreseeable future. Uh, let's move on to the uh, series in the game itself. First of all, we were having a debate yesterday. Could you argue that last night's game was the biggest in NHL history, given the 0-3 comeback and the best player in the world involved in a Game 7? Recency bias, I think you could say that, but it's recency bias. 
You know, I, I think it, you know, it, it's it's all generational. I would argue that the Canucks and Rangers in 84 was as, as, as big a game. I think people in Chicago and Montreal would argue game seven in 1973 uh, was as big as, as you were going to, to find. You know, I would argue that, you know, when you look at where, where hockey has come from and you had Toronto and Montreal playing in a game six Stanley Cup final in 67 or a Montreal-Calgary Stanley Cup final in 1989. I, I think that they're all um, at this point with where the game is in in this. Maybe we can pick 20 years. Is this the biggest game in 20 years? Yeah, it is. There have been bigger games as big as we saw last night uh, in the history of the game. And it just so happens that we like to we, – we, we like to take extremes. It's either the best or the worst, and we don't understand the 90% of gray in the middle. Uh, let's ask our poll question. Should Connor McDavid uh, – was it disrespectful for McDavid not to come out and accept the Smythe Trophy? No, I, I don't think so. I, I think you have to respect the player. I think you have to respect his emotions. Um, you know, uh, I, I, I never played in the national hockey league, but when you have gone through the, the, the battles of the games that these guys went through together, I'm not sure I'd want to leave the room to go back on the ice to, to receive an award and come in back into my, the room saying I want an award. Um, I, I, you know, uh, you know, JSA Air went back on the ice in 2003, um, to accept the award. Um, I, I think if you ask J.S. Shiger then and in years past, in past years, would he, could he have gone back on the ice? I think he would have a different opinion than what he did. Yeah, he has actually um, said that the uh, Once Upon a Time in Anaheim uh, E60 documentary, he mentions that um, it was, uh, um, it was a sad moment, he called it. Uh, and he yeah, left but it's, it's, he left I, 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 on a trainer's yeah. table out of view from his team. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, you know, the, the longest time, and I'm going to show my age here, for the longest time as a guy who produced the Stanley Cup final, the Cusmice Trophy was was always given out in the TV studio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, Ronnie Hextall, Ronnie Hextall won it in 87 in Edmonton, and we did it um, outside of the flyer dressing room as a presentation. Mm -hmm. It wasn't done on the ice. Um, I think there has to be, I, I have no issue the way they handled it last night. I have no issue the way Connor handled it last night. Um, and I, you know, I think that, um, I, I think from that perspective, it was handled as tastefully as it could be. My pal McCowan though, I got to tell you, my pal McCowan, who always comes up with different angles, asked the question on our show this morning, um, what if the game had been in Edmonton? Would Connor have gone on the ice in Edmonton? Yeah. And a really good question. And we'll never know, and but uh, something tells me he would not have because he'd be so disappointed still. And if he had been in Edmonton, because one of the things that we're seeing in our comments on our poll question, would that have been disrespectful to and stealing from stolen from the Panthers celebration? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I it, listen. It, we have be. We, we are still all human. Mm -hmm. We are still all em emotional. We have to allow for individual emotions to play a part in sports. You know, for Connor not to come up, it was an emotional decision he made, and you have to respect that. I think so they now, the question, I, I, Shannon. I think there's I think there's a spot where they this can do This one it. has a uh, a brainchild well, in terms well, of what to two, do. Going two comments. Forward. First of all, I think there is a way to do it. You do it at the end of the handshake line. You just get you gotta get on the mic quicker if you're if you're Gary in the NHL. There's there's that as an option. Or you do what every other sport does. And I know that NHL people like to uphold tradition. It was always thus, so we must not change. But of course, um, Connor McDavid is not hoisting that trophy if it's finals MVP like every other sport does. Great Cup MVP, Super Bowl MVP, NBA Finals MVP. They they focus on the moment that matters and the MVP of that moment, not on what he did 12 weeks ago in round one versus we don't even remember at this point. 
Um, Connor McDavid doesn't win this trophy for finals MVP. Not even close. He was he had one point in games one, two, six, seven. Um, it's Bobrovsky or it's Barkov. And we we get to celebrate the performance of a player on the winning team. Doesn't that make more sense? Well, not to me, but I understand the logic. Yeah. Uh, you know, I you know the, the award was was given to the league um uh, by the Smythe family because it was supposed to award the complete playoffs. That's that was that was that was the the original original rule. I, I, but here, but playoffs. But, here, but let me but let, but let me you you can extend that. So if you're going to do that, why are we giving out the Hart Trophy for a regular season? Why don't we include the playoffs too? You know there are there are exponential there are there are other equations that could come in. I don't have a problem with it being for. 25 games. I mean, I think it, I, I, Blake, I'll be honest. I think it's very respectful of the journey that players and teams take for the last two months period. And, 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 and if, if we're, we're worried about, well, we, we have to be concerned how we present the trophy, then we're missing the point of what the trophy stands for. The trophy stands for how, how we, uh, how, how that journey of, you know, five games against LA, seven games against the Canucks, six games against Dallas, and seven games against the Florida Panthers. That's the journey, and that's the trophy. So, uh, it, you know, changing the rules is one thing. I just don't think the rules need to be changed because we don't like how it's presented. No, it just feels like a participation ribbon at this point, though. Like it, it, it feels like oh, we should. You, give th a you think you think Connor McDavid was awarded the Smythe Trophy because of the participation medal? It feels like that now. Yeah. You didn't win the cup, but ah, you, you were good. You were good. Here's a, here's a trophy. Here's something like, no, it, reward the guy who brought his team to the Stanley cup. That makes more sense to me. It's what every other sport does. I think we're the ultimate team sport. And I, quite frankly, I could give two hoots about the con smite. And I, you know, as I, as I tweeted out, it's funny. I tweeted something out. There's so much discussion in game five and six about, well, Connor might win the, 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 the con Smythe. I tweeted out and it got lots of reaction. I tweeted out that Connor McDavid could care less about the con Smythe. Trophy. Sure. Having his, his name on one trophy, he wants 52 names on the big trophy. Well, and that's, that's all a, he wants. That, that supports my argument. Cause if you talk to guys, uh, Kobe, before he passed Michael Jordan and all that, they love to talk about their finals MVP in terms of their resume, in terms of why you know different different the, sport, different for different culture, different sport. Yep, different well, culture, let, different sport. Let me ask that uh, this because the other comments uh, we're seeing in our poll is no, no, it's an individual award. This is a team sport. Why not dispense with it entirely? Yeah, exactly. Then why have it? You know, I I, I I would <laughs> I would have no issue. With it being removed, I'd have no issue with it being removed, but it isn't removed. It is still part of the greatest silverware in the history of professional sports, yep. and let's just enjoy it for what it is. Yeah, no, it's the appetizer um, to the cup presentation, which is the greatest trophy in all of team sport. And I hadn't seen to the montage. Of the fine moments. I hadn't seen till the montage, by the way, which was well done as per usual at the end of the regular season uh, to. Uh, to uh, the killers this time. Um, I didn't see that little clip of, of Paul Maurice uh, talking of, was it Barkov saying, don't touch the Prince of Wales? Oh, yeah, no, yeah, that had been out there. Yep, that had been out there for sure. Um, I mean, yeah. again, why, why are we presenting well, these trophies yeah, well, that nobody it. touches well, them? Why are we presenting trophies that nobody wants right. in this sport? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the irony of it all is that, you know, the Edmonton Oilers will be unveiling a Campbell Conference banner and the Florida Panthers will be unveiling a Prince of Wales conference uh, <laughs> banner, uh, or an Eastern Conference banner, Prince of Wales trophy banner. Um, and, and, by, and by the way, every other sports league now presents trophies at the end of conference championships. No. The NFL does it. The NBA does it. The yeah. CFL does it. Yeah. Do they touch them? Yeah. No, they I do. Think, I think they, they do. do. Yeah. You know? People, you know? <laughs> People grab they our hunt I'm going back. By the way, I'm going to go back and touch my Stanley Cup, and I'm going to guarantee that I'll never win it. Okay, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> You're so right, John. Uh, <laughs> hey, if you had a vote, would you would you have voted for McDavid? Um, yes. 
If I, with, the, with the criteria of voting for 25 right. games, yes. Right. So yeah. let me ask you this. It, 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 let's survey the room. If you have a vote and you're voting for someone on the losing team who you know is not going to come out and accept the trophy, does that change your vote? Yeah, it does. It does for me. John? No, it can't. Should it? Can't. And by the way, by the time, you know, you voted at the 12 minute mark of the third period, you voted at the 12 minute mark of the third period. The Oilers could have scored when they pulled the goalie, oh, forced sure. overtime, and won the game. Now, I but, certainly, did, but by the way, last I checked, they didn't. So I certainly wouldn't pull the Jim Matheson and vote only. Well, for losing players. Well, no, but uh, here's the thing, and I know this because I've run Grey Cup MVP voting. John is right. You do it with time left in the game because the TV people are in your ear saying we need to know whoever. No, no, it's not the TV people. It's not the TV. It's the league people. The league. Well, TV it's people. The league people in conjunction with the TV people who will be awarding the MVP trophy. And so you, you do get it done early, but you allow for the fact that if things go buck wild here in the final right. couple of minutes and we have voters coming to us saying, I want to change my vote, then we're going to send you a second, you know, set right. of results. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, Absolutely. You, so Absolutely. there is a fail safe. And by the way, by the way if, if Sergei Bobrovsky had won the cons Smythe last night, mm -hmm. I would not have objected. Yeah. I would not have objected. You know, uh, and he he was... He would, you know, he won four games in, in the Stanley Cup final. He he was against. Uh, he went against Jeremy Swayman. He went against uh, Igor Shosturkin. He went against Andre Vasilevsky. Mm -hmm. You know, right. he he, he first, played a pantheon he, of head-to-head -head goaltender matchups. Quite true. You know, so so there was he, he was deserving of winning the trophy as well. If if the vote had gone and seventeen ballers, you know, if they had voted. Night for Bobrovsky, I would have been just fine with that. Yeah. But uh, if, if I was going to vote, I would have voted McDavid. A word or two on Roberto Luongo, John. I, I, I tell you what, um, when he, when I saw him beating the drum and I saw the expression on his face, I had never seen an expression on Roberto's face like that at the Olympics. During when I was wearing a mask when I was playing for the Canucks, but I'd never seen that kind of expression on his face and how involved and engaged he was. And then for him to uh, raise the cup over his head, I think I think there was a little bit of me that said, oh, "Okay, the uh, the circle is closed now. Life yeah. is good." Pretty cathartic. Pretty cathartic. Yeah. At, oh, at, yeah. at first, I thought it might have been put on, and then I saw his face again, and I'm like. No, I think he's just really pumped up for this oh, game. Oh, he, he was, he was, let's put it this way. He was better than Jack Nicholas. <laughs> yeah. I, I think he wanted to be in the blue paint for last night's game. <laughs> well, <laughs> it, it, I, I'm happy for him. I'm happy for Paul. You know, um, it, there are lots of great stories on both teams. Uh, it, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't hurt the game. The Florida Panthers won the Stanley Cup. That's for sure. And you've got to hand it to a uh, former player agent turned executive, Bill Zito. I mean, that Matthew Kachuk trade he pulled out, uh, pulled off a cup. I mean, that takes boulders, man. Uh, after a season in which you were as great as you were with a player who put up points like Huberdo, not to mention a top four right shot there, right side defenseman in, in yeah. Uyghur, and you give up a first round pick and you give up a reasonable prospect for one guy and he's a winger no less and here you are getting your reward and let's remember that was after a 122 point season right uh they did get swept by tampa down two they didn't renew the the coach that had put them the 122 points in andrew burnett because he'd replaced joel early in the season if you recall um you know so there and and then last night he made two trades at the deadline, Vladimir Tarasenko and mm -hmm. Kalapozo, and both guys are in the lineup last night. Yeah. Yeah. So there's lots of there's lots of positives for Billy Vito. Uh and I I, I I have friends in Columbus, and I think the ownership has to be wondering, hold on now. Mm. Bill Zito, the manager in Florida. Why wasn't he the manager in the end in Columbus? Uh, Paul Maurice, I'm sure I think most people are glad for him. Uh I did not 
I, you know, he's such a nice guy. I don't think he deserved to be Marty Schottenheimer of the National Hockey League. Uh, I'm glad he got a cup. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I loved what he said uh, when he turned and looked into the camera and he said to his father, mm. um, you know, Dad, your name is now going to go mm -hmm. there with Beliveau and Richard and Howe and Lindsay and Maurice. And I'll tell you what, I get emotional about giving the Stanley Cup up every year since the first time I saw it skate onto the, or carried out of the ice in Boston in the late seventies. I was almost in tears oh, when yeah. he said that. I was almost in tears because that's why we play the game, boys. That's why we love the game, and that's why we're so committed to the game is for your family. Yeah, uh, first time I've watched the Stanley Cup final with my dad, and I don't know how long, you know that. So that one yeah. hit. Um, in particular, uh, they did a very nice job on the opening and on the closing and incorporating the voice of our late friend, Bob Cole, because yesterday was his birthday. So very well done by the yep. Hockey Night Canada producer group on the front and back end. of uh, games. Well, there, nobody could call a game like Bob Cole. Nobody could do it like Robert Cecil Cole. And uh, we miss him every day. So, Florida Panthers, enjoy today because your GM is at work tomorrow, and one of you may not be a Panther by week's end. Yeah. Isn't Isn't that bad? Bad? You've been traded. No, yeah, I'm just joking. Well, it's, <laughs> you it, never it, know. it is a little much, John. Yeah. Like, I, I feel bad for some of these scouts and front office people who should really get a few days to savor all of this and instead are going to get a few hours before the new league. Well, you know, I, I, not to uh, – your timing is tough, but what – but. Like Bill Zito's had his meetings all for the last eight days because he can't do anything during the game or during the day of the practice. So, he, you know, their scouting department, me and Brian McKay and all those guys, they've all been, uh, they've all been working their tails off. So have, uh, have the Oilers with their group. Interesting to see what happens in Edmonton uh, sooner than later with the, uh, we know that Kenny Holland is leaving is how quickly things uh, will, will happen in Edmonton to find a new manager and what happens there. Okay, well, we'll talk next week, and uh, when we do, free agency will be will be upon us. We'll have Vancouver Canucks, not, all the, a completely different team, the Vancouver Canucks. Right? You expecting the Canucks to be uh, big players? Uh, I I'll be I'll be lying if I tell you that I had been on the phone for the last three days worried about free agency. I've been worried about the Stanley Cup final. I've been uh, do I think that do I think the Canucks are going to be doing things? I will never not think that Jim Rutherford wants to do things. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Jimmy That's Rutherford, you know, we, we, I still remember when he came on our show on the radio one day and I said, why are you concerned about losing your draft picks? No, no, I want to win the cup. Now I've got Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin and we're going to win again. Mm -hmm. I, I'll worry about that when we have that problem. And they went on and won the second st consecutive Stanley cup. Yep. Uh, we'll take just one. Here in Vancouver, yeah, exactly. Yeah. We don't need two. Yeah. Oh, nice. and he, after you know what? After all those years of being downtrodden, you get to the second round of the playoffs. Now you want everything. What's going on? <laughs> Close to 94, 2011 as well. Yeah. Those were really big games on the way in. They were. Yeah. It, 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 I I I think I agree with you, Matt. I think mm -hmm. I agree with you. Although the rest of the I think the rest of the country cheered more, other than British Columbia cheered more for the Oilers this year than the rest of the country cheered for the Canucks in 2011. Yes. I think that's <laughs> probably, yes. <laughs> the Oilers have the best player on the planet. He's created a bit of a following. Mm -hmm. And the last and he's from and he's from Southern Ontario. So well, and the last greatest player to ever live was also in Edmonton and spreading the brand around as well. So yeah, I will concur with that. Okay. Hey, everybody, if you're enjoying what you're seeing here, then follow along with Secure Some Price on YouTube. I promise more content coming. They call it, the kids call it subscribe on YouTube. Well, how about liking it? Do that as well. Smash it right now.